this is what happened. My daughter runs track. So we are we are track dads. <laughs> yep. Derek and I. Derek, right? Yes, Derek. We're, we're track dads. <laughs> and track dads, we realize the the pain of sitting in the sun for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> every saturday and sunday and on tuesdays whenever mm-hmm. the track meets are we know yeah. we have to take an umbrella and we have to sit there but my daughter is a high jump so she's got high jump spikes she runs to 100 200 so she's got mm-hmm. sprint spikes and then she sometimes does a 400 so she moves into a cross country spike <laughs> these spikes cost about 80 to 180 dollars a pair especially yeah. the high jump spikes but here's the problem. She's a girl who's almost six foot. Well, not quite. She's about five, eight, five, nine now. <laughs> but she's only 14. Mm-hmm. So she's going to run into this problem very soon of not being able to find women's track spikes. Yeah, right. So when Noah explained to me what happened <laughs> with Wesley this year, I was like, oh my gosh, Community Made just became a performance shoe company (laughs) with a student athlete. And it's almost like an NIL deal because a year or two ago, Wesley could have been basically stopped. The CIF could have stopped him from competing if he had gotten a gift from Community Made a year or two ago, because you you can't give gifts. And we know the CIF is a stickler. If you transfer schools, the CIF will stop you from competing. It's just a pain in the butt, but that's not the sneaker story. The sneaker story is that Derek and Wesley hooked up with Noah at Community Made. And do you have the shoe with you right now? Um, yeah. He hooked up with them at Community Made and Community Made, who has never made a performance track <laughs> spike, turn it over so we can see the bottom of it. They created Derek and Wesley, they created Wesley <laughs> a track spike from scratch. <laughs> the shoe did not exist at all. One, one <laughs> the, we did pull that spike plate off of a smaller size Nike track shoe. So we did not create that molded spike plate from scratch, mm-hmm. but it was on a smaller size that didn't fit Wesley. So in order to fit his uh, size 16 foot, we needed to then build the rest of the sole and the upper from scratch. So 90%, yes. 90%, that's still more than, because you can 3D print a plate now if you want. Especially with KX Labs, you might be able to. So Wesley, when you went out to go look for track spikes, you ran into the same problem that we all run into during track season. There Mm -hmm. were no spikes. Yes. This is the funny thing about that. Even if there were spikes, there weren't going to be any in size 16. Right, right, yeah. So I would assume that you went to all of the sneaker brand websites. Yes. Yeah, I sure did. (laughs) (laughs) So Derek, which, well, I guess we don't want to call and put them on blast. (laughs) But (laughs) Nike didn't have them. Adidas and Puma, neither of those sites had a track spike for Wesley. No, in fact, what I, what I found most mostly was you couldn't, you definitely couldn't get it through the retail websites. So what I tried to do was to go to the team website to see if I could um, order them that way. <clears throat> when I um, when I did that, I got responses, but every response was. We don't go past size 15. Some places didn't go past size 13. Yeah, yeah, that's even in basketball. I was a basketball coach. Even in basketball, it's hard to get size 15s and up. Because, I mean, I understand that, like, in high school, you do have less athletes because they're still growing a lot of them with a shoe that size. But if a kid is in high school and has that size of shoe – they're potentially going to be really good at that sport. <laughs> <Just by thinking. laughs> exactly. How much they've grown up to that point. So you'd think these brands would see that opportunity, at least like do a small production run to like uh, service that, uh, that group of people. But well, this is the interesting thing. Uh, Academy sports. Yeah. Right. Uh, Dick sporting goods. 
Um, in California, there's Big Five. I don't know if Big Five is still around. I think they may have gone bankrupt. Yeah, Big Five. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you still have they're, Big they're Five. They're hanging on still. Uh, it's it's kind of sad going into Big Fives these days, but they're yeah. That's on. I kind of <laughs> gathered that, and then you have Team Sales. But this is the thing about all of those locations is they don't carry those sizes either, and you really have to figure it out. And if the track coach, the track coach is there to really just training coach i was a sneaker guy so for my basketball team i bought all the sneakers because i was into sneakers i knew where to get them Mm. most coaches were older than i was so those guys that are older they don't know how to kind of hunt down these shoes Mm -hmm. so i gotta ask what event did you run wesley um i ran the 300 hurdle really Mm -hmm. (laughs) did you guys watch the uh, world um the world championships this past week Mm-mm, I have no, no, we didn't. <laughs> Here you say you didn't watch the world champion. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So the world championships happened this week, man. Uh, the 400 meter uh, hurdle. Oh, gosh. Um, Sydney McLaughlin for the women. And this is funny. The women's mm-hmm. side of track and field is more popular than the men's side. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. Completely. Yep. But you didn't watch this and you need to go back and watch it, like pull it up on YouTube. But Sydney. <laughs> Sydney McLaughlin went to Kentucky. She runs for New Balance, right? Mm-hmm. And um, with the World Championship, there's no affiliation. Everybody wears the USA or their country's uniform. Dude, she is not off, I think, three seconds from her time two years ago till this last a World Championship. I think she mm-hmm. ran like a 51 in the 400. Wow. <laughs> wow. So... <laughs> Did you, uh, you know, I have to ask, did you win CIF? Um, for my league, um, I, I was actually the champion for 300 hurdles in league finals, but um, we're not only um, juniors and seniors are allowed to go on the CIF. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How old, how old are you? I'm 15. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, all right, so, what, so you didn't run, you ran up against seniors and juniors. And you won league? Oh, oh no, no, no. It was just it was just freshman and soft. And soft. All right. For, uh, it's frost off. Mm-hmm. Frost off. All right, cool. All right. So you won league, which is a big deal because people don't understand. And this is funny. I'm in Memphis now, but because I lived in California for so long, out there in a league, you're going to have 10 to 11 teams or 10 to 12 teams in a league. Or some mm-hmm. teams, some conferences you may have five to 10 teams, but league in California, specifically like El Segundo league out there is, was it division one, two, three? What are you guys division? You know, I think you guys are D3. I think we are. Yeah. yeah. Sounds I think right. you're D3. That's 1500 yep. students, 1500 to 2000 students. You would yeah, be the biggest. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You'd mm-hmm. be in the biggest conference in Tennessee. You'd be in the biggest league. <laughs> <laughs> Because out here, the schools, some schools have 500 to 1,000 people total. Mm, right. You're talking about having 500 to 1,000 students in your grade. <laughs> so the idea that you can win the Frost Soft League, how many, how many years have you been running track? Uh, this was my last year was just my first year. <laughs> so just one. <laughs> first <year>. Really? <laughs> you ran the, hur- the 300 meter hurdles your first year in one league. <laughs> in my head i'm cursing <laughs> because that it's the toughest running event because the 300 when you go up to the next level you're going to be doing the 400 right right <laughs> the 400 completely destroys your body <laughs> but, you know so think about that if you're just running a basic 400 no hurdles dude it's so hard yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. your first year you i can't believe you didn't watch the world championships i'm actually <laughs> I'm, I'm offended noah <laughs> didn't you tell them that it was happening no. uh, they're the ones in track i just get the shoes <laughs> <laughs> all right so all right, i'm gonna bounce back to noah real quick so noah the process of creating these shoes you said you guys pulled the sprint plate yeah, which is the TPU, 
It's TPU. Yeah. No, it's not carbon fiber. It's a TPU plate. Uh, I don't think it's TPU because it's super rigid. TPU is it? Be that rigid. What yeah. is it? That plate. It's, it's plastic. So I would imagine yeah. it's like an ABS or a PVC yeah. maybe. Yeah. Uh, Feels like a something PVC. Something hard and rigid. Yeah. I, I don't know exactly what's used for it. I haven't. You, you bringing up that it could be 3D printed next time definitely – got some gears rolling in the back of my head of what we could do for the shoe next year for, for Wesley. That, that's uh, exactly where but, uh, I'm going with this question. Yeah. The, the build out of the shoe, how long did it take for you to build that shoe from the time that Derek and Wesley came over to community made? What was the length of that process to get him a shoe made? We did have a little bit of a longer time on than usual because we had to, like we were talking about earlier, even just find an available track shoe in a size 15 that we could then disassemble and use the, the spike plate from yeah. to then put on a size 16 to be able to fit his foot. Um, so there was a bit of time in there that we were sourcing that and figuring that out and finding a few options for that. But I think total, it was, was it like a month or so? Wesley and Gordon, am I remembering that right? Um, I think so, yeah. That sounds about right. Because mm -hmm. I think I, I think it was about two weeks to find to find the shoe, right? The mm -hmm. plate, whatever. And, and then yeah. once we got past that piece, it was about a two week process after that. Once wow. we got, yeah. got you guys to play. So you have a custom <laughs> you have a custom <laughs> shoe made specifically for you <laughs> directly from a startup that in my opinion community made is about to be one of these companies that's going to explode and the reason i said that community made was going to be one of the biggest businesses in the sneaker industry was because of the potential for them to shift into performance now the reason i brought that up in articles on the website was because they make some models that look like skate shoes mm -hmm. so i can't help it <laughs> because no escapes yeah <laughs> so they have these shoes Which is why i don't know anything about track it's, it's <laughs> primarily a custom shoe company they're making these shoes custom and the ability for them to take the time and work with one that does not happen yeah mm -hmm. Derek and west it does not happen I can contact people that are inside of brands and ask them for something or like my daughter, she won high school, uh, middle school high jump mm -hmm. and Adidas sent her a pack. And last week, Meryl running sent her trail shoes. Wow. But yeah. I'm in the business. So I write about these right. things and they are like, Hey, your daughter's doing, we'll send you this stuff. They typically don't, send track equipment because the focus in the United States, it's just like you didn't know the world championships were going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the U.S. does an extremely poor job of promoting track and field, but basketball and football get the majority of the coverage and track and field doesn't get the same amount of coverage that it should. But for community made to do what they did for you is, and that's not me trying to hype up community made. The dead honest truth, man, nobody could have pulled that off. <laughs> nobody. Right. No, I, I can tell you, I looked at so many different manufacturers. Um, you know, we were, we were, we, we didn't know what we were going to do. You know, um, this was Wesley's first year running track. I ran track growing up, so I, I I knew the sport, and I can tell you the shoes are important, right? Yes. Um, to have something light on your feet, to have um, the biggest problem I used to have when I ran track was there was always a spike right in the middle of the ball of your foot, and yep. when you're in sprints, that is the worst place for a spike to be. <laughs> it just it it causes a callus and it really hurts over you know you know once you start training a lot, right? Um, so you know, but I was, I was just concerned for, for him just from the standpoint of, you know, I didn't know how well he was going to do. I just knew if you don't have the right equipment, it's going to hard to be able to do well, even if you're training hard, because 
if you're starting off with a shoe that doesn't have the right grip or does or is too heavy, you're at a natural disadvantage in a race, oh, right? Completely. So, um, you know, so it was really, uh, it was really cool when uh, um, we found Community Made and they agreed to be able to make uh, make the shoes for Wesley. Um, I, I was um, I was ecstatic just mm -hmm. because, um, you know, again track was a new sport for Wes. He had done other sports in the past. And I was like, are you sure you want to do track? I mean, maybe this, maybe this is God trying to tell you something. Maybe you need to go back to the other sports. But now nah, I want to run track. I want to run track. I was like, okay, okay. It's a great sport. So, yeah, it is. It, it's a it's a fun sport. It's a but it's it's a grueling sport. It's a it's a the the workouts are tough, right? Yeah. And uh um you know you got to get your body right. And then after that, you got to have the right pair of, of shoes to make sure that when you're running in the race, you're, you're not at a disadvantage, right? Well, the equipment is extremely important in the hurdles. And it was, the world championships were tough to watch because I think his name is Christian. I may be wrong. No, Christian is the hundred meter guy. Um, our best guy for the United States hit the hurdle. Mm -hmm. and fail. Oh man, it was heartbreaking. You know, you see that and it's like the 300 meter, the shoes, Wesley, are they comfortable? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Noah, you used an insole. I know you use it in the casual shoe. Wesley, can you show me the insole? Mm -hmm. What is that, Noah? That's a Blumaka Connect insole that is made with a layer of TPU on the footbed surface that is textured so that it actually grips your sock when you wear it. So it's called Connect so that it connects your foot better to the shoe. Now, most track spikes, Wesley, do not have shoe inserts. Nope. <laughs> nope. Do you know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> They don't have, you're literally sitting on the strobo, which is probably a thin mm -hmm. layer. No, am I right? It's typically just a thin yeah. layer of. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're trying to cut away as much as they possibly can to leave you with like the lightest shoe that you can do your best in and have the least amount of weight in this thing. That insole doesn't shift at Wesley. I'm not you, Noah. Wesley, that insole doesn't shift. When you are you barefoot or are you wearing um, socks when you run your hurdle? Oh, I'm wearing socks. Really? And there was mm -hmm. no shifting in the shoe? I don't think so, no. <laughs> I didn't feel that at least. <laughs> no, you guys are on to something, dude. The only yeah, I mean, people... It was one of those moments when, when Derek and Wesley came in our shop, we could tell they were kind of at the end of their rope in terms of like having exhausted all other options. <laughs> right. And we were like, we haven't made a track shoe, but I mean, our founders have a history in athletic shoe, working with athletic shoe companies. Uh, I know we can make a track shoe, but there was just the reality, like we haven't done it before. We're like, if you want to take that risk with us, let's see how it goes. And it uh, seems like it went pretty well. The only, yeah. the only sport, the only events that people tend to wear socks. My daughter wears socks in the high jump. It's a completely different construction for a shoe. Mm. So it is more like a basketball shoe with spikes because oh, okay. of the torque when you jump. Wesley, you should consider high jump. I was thinking about doing jumps next year too, so. You should definitely consider because she's, as tall as she is, she's bigger than all the other eighth graders. So hurdling mm -hmm. was, people get more kind of, they have their, what's the word I'm looking for? They're more agile, coordinated. Mm -hmm. The shorter they are, the more coordinated they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the idea of, we got about, I'm, I'm gonna wrap this up in like 10 minutes. The um, the idea that may I ask how tall you are? Oh, I'm six five. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, man! Um, 
We need a super cut of this recording of just all of Chris's reactions to everything. <laughs> um, first off, when I coached, I, my my players, my basketball players had to either run cross country or play volleyball. I did not let them play basketball year round, mm-hmm. ever. And that's because I've been doing a series of videos lately uh, talking about Derrick Rose, uh, Zion Williamson. And what I've noticed is their jump mechanics are trash. Mm -hmm. So they played AAU basketball for all of these years, right? Mm -hmm. And through the process of playing AAU, they never did any training where they were taught how to land properly. So when you watch Zion or you watch Derrick Rose old clips when he was this explosive, explosive dunking point guard, they land with their legs straight and they land on one leg. And that one leg is absorbing all of this force. And then people are like, well, why does he keep getting hurt? Go watch the video. Watch every time he dunks the basketball, his legs are straight. Right. The fact that you're competing in those shoes and those shoes are not slipping, community made, has just created a shoe because most sprinters, and Derek, you know this, most sprinters Mm. don't wear socks. You can't wear them. You'll get calluses. Um, it'll rub the bottom of your foot it just hurts so the fact that you made a shoe and is that leather can i say it again wes um the shoe or the the shoe shoe. is it a leather and mesh yeah it's leather and mesh yep no one makes leather track shoes anymore now obviously that's because they're cutting down on the weight yeah however however and noah i need your brain on this question a leather track shoe will actually in the sections where you have it it will form to the shape of your foot better than a synthetic won't it Mm -hmm. yeah especially after you sweat and run in it and get it a little bolt your foot a lot more but also i mean reinforcement wise uh i mean there are obviously reinforcements people are using with uh whether it's webbing or some variation of knit, but an entirely knit one is really hard to reinforce without a bunch of plastic components. Right. Um, so having that reinforcement be leather uh, gives you not only something that molds the foot better, but is at least a little more natural as well. Yeah, and I think a, a lot of it now with track shoes is they're doing um, fused overlays. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you got this really high heat process on the um, polyester. Mm-hmm. in these synthetic weldings and it's shaped around the foot mm-hmm. but um my daughter when she was running this year and this is for you Wes it was raining and the synthetic with the rain soaked up all of the rain mm-hmm. oh. and she had to sit out two weeks of the season wow. she got a stress strain in her foot because mm-hmm. when the shoe got wet her foot was oh. shifting all over. Now you see why I'm sitting up here like, dude, no one makes a leather shoe. I get it because they're reducing the weight, but that may have been the best thing that you could have, because it almost looks like it's got a shoe insert in sole. I see a little bit of padding at the heel, which does not happen either, <laughs> unless you're running a longer distance. We did right. a real tiny wedge of EVA at the heel. That's what I was about to ask. There's a, yeah. All right. So this, okay. I got to get ready to wrap this up. And I, Derek and Wesley, congratulations on the season. Keep competing. My daughter's running. I'm going to begin amplifying track and field a lot more. <laughs> so make sure there you're recording all of the events as best as you can, because it's hard to get them when he's going around the track. Yes. yes. Record them as best as you can <laughs> uh, document it, keep his times, uh, run heels, you know, do your run, run heels, go out and do your training, uh, stay off of the concrete, do your training on grass and dirt, yeah. you know, and, and work on your sport because I think in the next three to five years because of what's happening on the women's side of track and field. I think the NIL deals and I think there's going to be an explosion in track and field. Specifically with Noah Lyles running the 200 the way he did this past weekend. You didn't get to see it. Go on YouTube 
and watch Noah Lyles and Arian stick the hurdle we don't have. I can't think of a male hurdler right now, man, to save my life, except for, um, what's his name? Derek, you remember, wore the glasses. Um, that um, Ronaldo Nehemiah? Is not Ronaldo. Ronaldo went on to play for the 49ers, right? Yeah. Did he play for the yeah. 49ers? Ronaldo Nehemiah, oh. not him. Uh, Edwin Moses. Edwin Moses, yep, 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 yep. Edwin Moses. We haven't had a great kind of hurdler for men in a while. Now, the kid that's got drafted by uh, the Giants, that, and this is going to break your heart too. He was running 100, uh, 110 meter hurdle men's in the world's. And because his reaction time was less than a millisecond, he got disqualified oh. at the start. Dude, it was, I was so mad. Mm. And I was like, so you're telling me because he started a millisecond too fast, which you couldn't see on camera. It only picked it up because of the way the blocks are set up with the camera that he got disqualified. Now, I know he's not completely crushed about it because he's going to be making a few million with the Giants or whoever he's playing football for this year. But it was, uh, and he went to Oregon. But it's, I commend you guys for taking a chance on a startup, a smaller company like Community Made community made nor i'm celebrating the fact that you guys made this product for the first time and the athlete went on to win league we were pretty blown away too like we i knew i knew we could make the shoe but again like we said when they came in we're like we'll take the risk together we'll see how it goes and yeah clearly it worked out i uh i'm really excited about how all that turned out and uh we haven't talked yet about next season, but the minute Chris started talking about 3D printing the plate this time around, and <clears throat> Derek, you brought up placement of the spikes themselves. If we're 3D printing it, we can map out exactly where you want those spikes to be placed. We can go real custom on this round. So yeah, and that stuff will be super cool. Let me throw in this. I would hope that um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Gray um, over at Helix, is this the yeah. same Dr. Gray? Yeah. I, Jeff, I would hope- Jeffrey. Not Jeff. Dr. Jeff. Jeffrey. Yeah. I, I mess up names. He, he um, I would Jeff. hope that Helux would come in and allow Wesley to, I'm actually going to, yes, I'm saying this. Wesley and Derek should go over to Helux, get their feet tested, mm -hmm. work with Doc, and then carry that kind of mapping over to Community Made because I, I think you, you guys are on to something. And I don't know as far as like NIL deals go, but if I'm community made right now, I would have Wesley wearing a pair of my attractions. <laughs> um, I, that's right, I'm trying to get you a deal. The um, <laughs> I would have the family wearing Molinos right now. Everybody would have a pair of Molinos and uh, Wesley would be some, I would have a photo shoot next week and this story would be highlighted on my website. I'm going to put it on mine. And um, I want pictures, Noah, so send me pictures. Yeah, but this should be on those. the website. Um, this is one of the most amazing things that I've seen in sneakers. And even though people say that sneaker culture is messed up, it's not. These are the perfect stories. Do you guys have anything you want to say? We're getting ready to wrap this up. About 30 seconds, take about 10 seconds and... I just, I just want to say one thing just to, you know, you made the comment about, you know, taking a risk. I didn't feel it was a risk when I, when I went into a community made because they have a great showroom. I looked at the shoes that they had there on display and they were all amazing. Right. And so when they said, Hey, we think we can do this. I didn't feel like it, it wasn't going to work out, you know, um, um, well, that, that's good enough, and I'm cutting you off because we're going to end this right there. On that <laughs> one. I don't even want any more. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for helping me tell everybody why I still love sneakers. Thank you, guys. This is over, and I'll talk to you all later. <laughs>